Good morning. In case you didn't know it, I think fall is upon us. The nights are getting a little bit chillier, but we are still thankful for Sunday to rise and give God the glory. Thankful for this day and all the gratitude that lies within. Today is a continuation. Last week we were reading Matthew, the 21st chapter, and we read um, the 23rd through the 32nd verse, but we continue on, so that's good. It's kind of like we're not starting afresh, but we're continuing on from the reading last week. Today's sermon title, Responding to God's Call, Part 2. There was a birthday party for toddlers. The guests, those that were invited, were more toddlers. Due to their mobility challenges, each guest was accompanied by one or more adults to this party, a toddler birthday party. The kids, barely aware of themselves, moved around exploring their new environment. They noticed other people liked them, but they were vaguely uninterested. Two kids managed to get past stranger relationship to actually experience some play until they both decided they wanted the same toy. Not yet skilled with delayed gratification, the kids started to tussle with each other over the toy. One kid pulled, the other pulled. Finally, one kid hit the other kid, leaving the hit kid quite startled. One parent was watching and one was not. The parent of the attack kid was the parent that was watching. The parent of the aggressor kid was talking to other parents. The parent of the attack kid moves in to quite aggressively reprimand the kid who hit their child. Have you ever observed a mother hen with her newborns? First of all, they travel in packs. They travel very closely together. They stay together probably is an understatement. The mother hen provides warmth and protection. When you see the mom, you see the chicks, and when you see the chicks, you see the mom. A mother hen might cluck softly to call her little chicks and loudly to indicate that there is danger. The mother hen teaches them how to find food and teaches them social behaviors. She is their guide. The mother hen is very protective, and if she perceives a threat, let me tell you, the heat is on. Ask me how I know. If you ever get between a mother hen and her chicks, let me just say you may get physically assaulted by a hen. In many life forms, we see parents rising to the occasion, rising up on behalf of their little ones. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Jesus poses to those listening, if someone harms your child, what would you do? We already got a glimpse of the parent at the birthday party. We got a glimpse of mother hen on the road, and now a servant and his son. The response from those gathered is typical. He will bring the wretches to an inn and rent it out to tenants who will pay. Well, they sort of got the question right. I mean, what would you do if someone messed with your child? It appears that they think that this is how God works in the world. This is how God shows up, maybe based on their own subjugation, maybe based on their own time period, they would want God to show up and stand up for them. Get to it, God. Do your thing. I've been wondering what our Venezuelan siblings would want God to do in their country. How would they want God to show up now? I live close to a police station, and every day I get to drive by and see a lot of people living outside, basically. In case you didn't know, in Venezuela, which is many of the migrants that are coming to our country now, there is an economic crisis, political instability, human rights concerns, lack of basic service, food and medicine shortages, and increased crime rates. In the last decade, over 7 million migrants have fled Venezuela. Many economic analysts will tell you that the crisis was set by the United States. 
Venezuela was the main supplier of gas to the Caribbeans and Central America. That's a lot of oil. Our country undermined them to get suppliers to buy oil from us. This war on Venezuela not only impacted Venezuela, but Haiti and Nicaragua and Cuba, who all depended on Venezuela low-cost energy and assistance to their countries. I wonder how they would want God to show up now. The trial of the boy in the box began this week where adoptive parents built an eight by eight room off the side of the garage and locked the boy in. Go to school, come home, back in the box. This case is going viral. People mostly who do not even know this family, the boy or the situation, they're angry and have risen up to give similar responses as people gathered around Jesus. Give them the book, put them in a box, treat them like they treated this boy, send them to jail for a very long time. It is in our DNA when someone we care about, someone we know fondly, or even a stranger is getting treated poorly, it causes us to rise up. The landlord sends his servants to the tenants to collect rent in this passage. The tenants seize the servants and beat one, kill one, and stone one. The landlord sends more servants, same response. Finally, the landlord sends his own son, and this same response happens. This is how you treat my son. Enough is enough. Typical answer from most humans, that if people do evil, they deserve evil back. But not the answer that Jesus is looking for in this text today. This is not about a reaction. This is about responding. This is about remaining faithful even when we are being rejected. We are good at reacting. We've got that down really well. We're good reactionary individuals. But this text is about remaining faithful even when you are being rejected. The rejected stone in this text becomes the cornerstone. This is not about the battle, but the war. We are responding in the midst of havoc. Have you ever sensed that somebody was talking about you, but they use all this indirect language? But you kind of feel like they're talking about you. They'll go through the back door to get to the front room. Well, that's what Jesus is doing here. The parable is about the religious leaders, and guess what? The text tells us they know he's talking about them. But it goes beyond just talking about them. The stone that the builders rejected has become the centerpiece. He wants those around him to know this chapter is not the end of the story. Keep responding to the call of God. Don't give up. Keep following. Keep doing the things that you do. Keep being faithful. God doesn't necessarily show up like we would like, like some of those action Marvel movies. God's not looking for a reaction from us. But in this text, God's looking for a response. This is how I show up, and you can follow me. I have been there. This ain't been no easy ride. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up in places with no carpet on the floor at all, bare. And even though things look horrible now, inflation, I need some people who will remain faithful. It's stewardship month here at our church. Christians shy away from asking for money. We focus on what's going on around us. We're afraid to ask people because we can see that people are struggling, that people are going through some difficult times. Some of the poorest churches experience the deepest giving research shows. And do you know why? Because the ask is not about their condition. The ask is about their relationship. They give because something inside so strong continues to lead and guide and keep them. Here at United through the years, we look at the plate. We have been faithful. You guys have not stopped giving. Our giving has not gone down. We have been faithful. 
We almost don't even have to ask a good portion of you. We have seen folks give in this congregation. Some could say, look at this, look at that. Our backs are against the wall. We are facing some serious challenges. Anne made a motion last week to accept our budget. And what did she emphasize? I'm going to make this motion in, in faith. And that's all the ask of us is from month to month, every month, to respond in faith, to respond to the need. Because the stone that got rejected, the stone that got kicked around, the stone that wasn't up to par, the stone that didn't look all that great, becomes the centerpiece. So all Jesus is looking for now is a few more servants willing to take care of the vineyard. Is that you? Say amen. Amen, pastor. A few more people willing to be faithful. Is that you? Say amen. A few more people willing to follow. Is that you? Amen. A few more people willing to drop some seeds down. Amen. A few more people willing to water consistently. Is that you? A few more people willing to check and be observant and open to the Holy Spirit. Is that you? A few more people willing to wait and watch something grow. Is that you? If you're already doing this, keep up the good work. Don't give up the faith. Know that you are on the path. Be encouraged. And let us be the few people to see that the stone that got rejected became the cornerstone. Let us continue to be faithful and respond to God's call. Amen.